This is Sneaker Gears. My name is Levi, and welcome to a Running Gears Performance Gears review and comparison. Where today we're looking at the death of the Pegasus line. Thank you for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so down below. If you like the channel, give it a thumbs up. Or if you like the video, we do sneaker reviews, mostly basketball, and now a lot of running and some training shoes. And uh, we keep everything performance based. You try to keep a lot of the style and personal preference out of it. But title of this video, the death of the Pegasus, a review and comparison of the Pegasus 37 and what it's really done to shake up the running landscape and the Nike running lineup. All right, so I like to dive into the history of things a little bit. So the Pegasus line has always been a really daily trainer, something that is not the most comfortable, but certainly fairly comfortable. Uh, I think people who use it for just walking are always very happy with it. Uh, if you're out running, I think it does better with a little bit faster paces since it's not a max cushion shoe, but it's something that's all around. I know Kofuzi here is a runner in Chicago. Uh, the Pegasus line is something he always recommended for a lot of new runners since it does a lot very well. Well, the new Pegasus 37 kind of changes that and not necessarily in a bad way. So we're gonna step back and look a few years ago with the first Pegasus, both Zoom Air in the heel and the forefoot. And that was a Pegasus 33. Now I have here in my hand, the Pegasus 34. Now this had the same tooling essentially as a 33 with Zoom Air in the heel and the forefoot, but it did have that re-engineered upper that was uh, quite a bit more comfortable. They kept this uh, similar, upper on the 35, although they did improve it quite a bit, but they added full length zoom. Now, I actually personally preferred the 33 and then the 34 a little bit more since it used a larger volume zoom air in the heel and the forefoot, and you really felt it. The shoe came alive. Uh, the prior versions used zoom air in the heel and all versions used a Cushlon carrier. Now, Cushlon foam from what Nike used to have to what they have now is completely different. It used to be something that really absorbed impact, but kind of felt dead. Uh, Road Trail Run is a uh, YouTube and have a website. They do a lot of reviews and they find Cushlon very uh, kind of boring and dead and lifeless. So all the same terminology, but uh, essentially you don't feel the shock, but it's not doing anything really to help you run. It's not really bouncy. That's where the Zoom Air comes in and this felt really nice daily runner lightweight really enjoyed it all right so we went to the 35 nike actually used a full length zoom but they made it actually very thin now the zoom air actually it was closer to your heel in the back and then was lower in the forefoot so it wasn't as bouncing the forefoot but gave a little bit faster toe off so you felt the ground a little bit more all that said because of the cushion uh, where again not a soft or a bouncy cushion, it still was a little bit lifeless. Now, I still really liked the 35. The 36 used a lighter and possibly better fitting upper, but I really liked the upper what we had in the 34 and 35. So I really enjoyed these. I'm considering maybe getting a 36 just because the upper is nice and you can get those on sale. But these were daily trainers, not amazing, not... Uh, anything that you're gonna write home about, but something you can really recommend to anybody. But if you had a, a long run training option, if you had a speed day training option, there's gonna be better options out there. But all around one shoe, the Pegasus did it. Now Nike's whole lineup was predicated on having various shoes that are gonna be able to tackle different needs for the runner. So, and a lot of brands do that. So if you stay with one brand, you're gonna be able to buy multiple shoes depending on what you're doing. The Vomero was that full length zoom that we had in the 34 and 35 with a React phone. Thinking that should be great. Now for me as a 240 pound runner, 
this felt how I thought the Pegasus should have felt. So it, it still was a little bit quicker. I still had a little more uh, ground feel for my toes. This is something that I used on the track the other day and I actually really enjoyed it just because it wasn't too much cushion. Now this was definitely on the heavier side. This is absolutely over the years. The Vomero line has been a max cushion option for Nike. Overall, really like this one. And they updated that with what we have here, the Infinity Run. And I shouldn't say updated. This is their kind of signature, let me put this back here, high cushion option. We had the Infinity React before that. We had the Epic React. Um, so we had the uh, Lunar Epic, going back to the history of it. This is one that had probably 30% at least 25% more React cushion than the Epic React and this Infinity React. And for me, again, as a bigger runner, the Epic React is something a lot of runners like. If you're a little bit lighter, you can get that. It's very lightweight. You can get those on sale. But this, because of the amount of cushion, I enjoyed it that much more, as well as it has a little bit of a rocker, very similar to what Asics did with the Glide Ride and or Hoka does with their kind of little rocker where it just glides you to the forefoot. Absolutely love this shoe for my long run days. It's not too heavy. Uh, the cushion, I never feel like it's bottoming out. It's fantastic. So you have kind of this really balanced options here. And then comes along the Pegasus 37. The Pegasus 37 has a full length React carrier with a massive chunk in the heel. So on the budget, everyday trainer, you're getting the React cushion that you had on your $140 Vimero, on your $160 Infinity React. Now you have one zoom unit, but you have a massive zoom unit in the front. This is 10 millimeters. This is over double what we got from the 35 and 36. And I think still a slightly larger, not quite double than what we had on the 33 and 34. It also has a higher PSI for men versus women. So you have something that is decently bouncy in the forefoot. The more you pick up the pace, uh, it's almost like uh, over inflating a, a balloon where you squeeze it, it's, it's not exactly that soft, but you can really put a lot of pressure on it. So as you pick up the pace, you get a bouncy ride. On the heel with the cushion back here, you have something that's very soft. You have a lot of React. Now this compared to the Epic React, you start questioning, do you need the Infinity React? My, forgive me, not the Epic. The Infinity React with all that React when you have this. And that's still gonna give you probably 15%, maybe 20 aside more React cushion. But it's not giving you that pop. This is definitely something that's gonna be able to give you 90% of that cushion while still feeling quicker. Now this doesn't have any of the, the glide ride or forgive me, that rocker sensation where it's pushing you forward, but because of that zoom air, it does give you a nice pop without having any carbon fiber or shank plate in there. So it still feels very quick. By all means, this is way better. Where is that? Than the Vomero. I'm not sure. Now the Vomero, I still like specifically at the track because the track does have a little bit of cushion in the track. Uh, as well as that has a little bit less cushion than this. So I don't know why anybody would spend $20 more for a shoe that has less cushion, is heavier, and is not quite as snappy. Now, if you're wondering, well, Levi, why are you using it? I have it. I wanna have a place to use the Vomero because it's in my collection. But no, I could give that away or throw it away. There's no reason for you to get the Vomero. There's very little reason to get the Infinity React. So, what happened to the everyday trainer? Since this has become a very, not max cushion, but really close, maximally cushion shoe that you're able to use for a variety of things because it's still relatively light. It doesn't feel as, as clunky or heavy as some of these max cushion shoes that possibly are out there, but it's just different. So I started looking at what did Nike do to replace the Pegasus as your everyday trainer? Now I'll have a full review on this. I only went on one run, but this is something that if you look it up is only available on very few sites. 
It's very low key. And that's the all new Nike Winflow 7. Yeah. So this is using, and this is unconfirmed from Nike, Nike's new Kushlon. I'm calling it Kushlon 2.0. It is soft. It feels really nice. A lot more plush, I believe is the word. It is not the Kushlon of old. It is also using a heel and forefoot zoom unit that comparatively to the 34 is a lot more zoom. You feel this is more cushion than 34, 35, or 36 by far. So you're getting larger zoom units. Now, not the same size as the 10 millimeter in there, but I want to venture to say five or six millimeters with a large volume in the heel. I'm feeling a lot of zoom. I'm getting a plush landing from that Kushlon ride. I'm getting something that's lighter. If you look at the bottom here, this has a lot of flex grooves. You can see, you know, whatever, one, two, three, four, five versus one. So it feels a lot more natural on your foot. It, it doesn't have necessarily that pop because of that large zoom unit, but it, it I don't wanna say it's more comfortable, but this feels more like the everyday trainer. This shoe was shocking. Now I've gone on two short runs in this, guys. Uh, I've also used it just walking around for the day. So I put a little bit of time and I do want to have a full review on this. But the Windflow 7, vastly different than what we had before in the 5 or the 6, where they use different foams, they use different uh, zoom setups. This is honestly your new Pegasus, to be frank. This is really where the Vomero kind of sits. They, they've really shifted. Now, the good news about that is everyone wins because everything's cheaper. This was $90 and Nike actually had a sale where this was $62 or $67 right when it came out. And they, they quickly changed that over. I was able to take advantage of it. Now, this took almost three weeks to ship out because of the current environment. And if you look up Winflow 7, there's not many places that have it, but these are gonna drop in price. These are amazing. And if you're wondering, well, do you like it better than the Pegasus? You know what? They're just different enough where this feels a little bit lighter on foot. This feels a little bit more natural. And this has a plush feel, whereas this has a little bit more of a pop. Uh, definitely that zoom air in the heel versus a lot of react in the heel. This is softer in the heel, whereas this kind of has a little bit of bounce back there. But shockingly close and probably closer than nike will want you to believe especially with the price difference and the discounts going to be going on so the infinity react i still think has a place because of the amount of cushion because of the rocker design where it really lends itself to a great long run shoe or recovery shoe but ultimately you have a really nice lineup from nike Finally, there has been leaked pictures of the Vomero 15 coming out where Nike is going to be putting their high-end Zoom X cushioning that we have in the Vaporfly or now Alphafly in the heel along with a Zoom Air unit in the forefoot. Being a more midfoot and toe striker, whatever's in the heel doesn't really matter to me. Maybe it's a good shoe, maybe it's not. We'll, we'll see how it looks. But obviously, if you have the Pegasus with a really large amount of React in the heel already, and Zoom Air where it works fantastic. I guess the logical upgrade is put Zoom X, which is a higher end foam. And then you have that Zoom Air in the forefoot. So at least they can justify increasing that price or that's still gonna be 140 or maybe even more 160, whatever have you. As well as Nike still has their uh, Alpha Fly and their next percent, whatever they're calling it, the Temple Fly. So they have a couple of the shoes coming out that are really gonna be increasing the price and and higher performance and what have you since that zoom fly is going away now one shoe that nike is getting rid of uh, along with their zoom fly is their turbo line that's something i'm really sad about i'm gonna have a video on that hopefully help you guys out uh, there's nothing quite as light and as kind of poppy as that turbo where it really does help increase your turnover i really enjoy running that shoe because it it helps you, it almost forces you to really uh, increase your cadence, which is fantastic. But as far as the Pegasus 37, fantastic shoe. You can use it for everything. Just like I recommend, and it's like Nike's listening, but I think most companies are, you're getting a lot of cushion, which for the average runner is really helpful. 
but it's light enough that zoom air is positioned and kind of calibrated just enough where it still feels very quick. If you're going slow, that react cushion, the transition is still very enjoyable. Overall, fantastic shoe. It just doesn't really feel how the Pegasus line felt. This really does feel like kind of the Vimero uh, should have been or the successor to that because it is really nice. So don't want to take it away. Hopefully this video hasn't been negative, but if you are looking for a daily lightweight, more natural runner, definitely check out that Windflow 7. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up. I apologize for the lighting back here at the time I'm filming this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, I try to respond to everybody. And if you're looking to buy any of these, I will put links down below that can definitely help the channel out. As always, this is Levi with another Running Gears episode. Really appreciate you guys and I'll come at you later.